message this morning is titled uh, Good News or Bad News. And the message this morning focuses on the, the gospel message of Jesus Christ. All right. Um, and um, this gospel message is going to be good news for some and bad news for others. At the end of the day, it all depends on what we choose to do with it and how we choose to take it. Because there's coming a day when this gospel message of Jesus Christ um, that is so profound will be good news for some and bad news for others. So the message this morning is titled Good News or Bad News. And um, our reading is from two, two chapters, two passages. The first one is John 3, 16 to 18, which is quite popular. And the second one is John 3, um, verse 36. Um, before we read these passages, one of the things that we'll see as we read these passages, we're going to observe a number of things. The first thing that we're going to observe as we reach these passages is we're going to see God's love, God's love, His great love and mercy for sinners like you and me. We're going to see God's love and mercy um, and grace towards the sinful world. We're going to see that. The second thing that we're going to see as we read these passages is we're going to see the frightful judgment and the frightful wrath of God that remains upon all those that choose to reject, that choose to ignore, or choose to trifle with God's mercy and grace, and who take God's mercy and grace for granted. Um, it's nice to talk about the lovely side of the gospel, but the reality is that we must also talk about the frightening side uh, for those who reject the gospel of Jesus, um, of Jesus Christ. So we'll read John 3, 16 to 18, and then read John 3, uh, uh, 36, and then we'll, we'll carry on. Uh, so John 3, 16 to 18, it says here, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It's very simple. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. The first thing that we see here is God's immense love for the world. God sent Jesus into the world because he loves us. And he sent him into the world so that we are not condemned, but that we are saved from our sins. And it's very clear here that whoever believes in Jesus, whoever trusts in Jesus, whoever follows Jesus, whoever emulates Jesus, whoever follows his teachings, whoever trusts in him, fully and completely as a Lord and Savior, it is here that they will not perish but have eternal life, everlasting life. Verse 17 again, God did not send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. I will see here this morning that it is not God's desire that anybody perish, that, but all will be saved. But when Jesus returns a second time around, he's not coming to save the world again. He is coming to judge the world. The first time he came was to save the world. And that was an act of God's grace and mercy. The second time when he comes around, he's coming to judge the world. Verse 18 says, whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe, whoever does not follow Christ, whoever does not trust in Christ, whoever ignores Christ, whoever rejects Christ, whoever trifles with the grace that God gives us through Christ, the Bible tells us that they stand condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. There is no other way to salvation but the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other way to salvation but the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read John 3, 36. What does it tell us? John 3, 36 tells us, it tells us this again, the same point, whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever believes in the Son, and believe there means to trust in Christ, 
as Lord and Savior, to follow Jesus. It's not just to believe intellectually, but to believe also in our hearts. When we believe in our hearts, it will transform how we live. It will transform what we do. It will transform our entire lives. And we'll be, we'll, be, we'll be motivated to be like Jesus in thinking, in character, in deed. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. But whoever rejects the Son will not see life. For the wrath of God remains on them. There is good news for those who believe in Jesus. And the Bible tells us here in John 3.36 that whoever believes in Jesus who follows him will have eternal life. That's the good news. And there's bad news for those who reject Jesus. The same Bible tells us that whoever rejects the Son will not see life. Why? For the wrath of God, the judgment of God remains on them. So what we see in these verses is a couple of things, like I said before. What we see is the gospel of Jesus Christ or the good news of Jesus Christ. And why is this the good news? It is the good news firstly because the word gospel means good news. And it is the good news because God through his son, Jesus Christ, provides a way for us. God gives us a way. He provides a way for us to be forgiven, to be pardoned of our sin, and to be freed from the penalty of sin. Through his son, Jesus Christ, God provides a way for us to be reconciled back to him through Christ. And through Christ, he provides a way for us to spend eternity with him in heaven. He gives us eternal life through Christ. So the gospel is the good news because through Christ, God gives us a way to be free from our sin. He gives us a way to be free from the penalty of sin. And he gives us a way to be reconciled back to him through Jesus Christ. And he gives us eternal life through Jesus Christ. But here's the thing, for us to really appreciate the good news of the gospel of Jesus, we need to first understand the bad news. For us to truly understand and appreciate the good news of the gospel, we need to first know what the bad news is. And what is the bad news? The bad news is that every single one of us, every single human being on this planet, all of us have broken God's divine laws and commands. All of us. We have all broken God's divine laws and commandments. All of us have all disobeyed and rebelled against his laws and his ways. All of us have consciously or unconsciously gone against God's clear principles. We've pointed our fingers to God and said, God, I will go my own way. I will do my own thing. I will not follow your ways. I will go as I believe and as I feel. And when we do this, God calls it sin. And every single one of us are guilty. Every one of us are guilty. And God himself, through his word, he calls it sin. What does the Bible tell us about sin? Let's look at Romans 3.23. Romans 3.23, what does it tell us about sin? Romans 3.23, I just want to find it very quickly. Romans 3.23, it says here, um, hang on a second. Romans 3.23, it says here, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All, not some, not few, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And verse 24, by the way, goes on and says, And all are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that came through Christ. So all have sinned. Every single person stands guilty before God. All of us stand guilty before a holy and a righteous God. All of us are guilty. And the Bible says it's a frightful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But then that's the bad news. But verse 24 of Romans 3 says to us, and all are justified. All are justified freely 
That is, we are all made right freely by his grace through the redemption that came through Jesus Christ. So we have a choice to stand guilty before God or to accept that grace, that redemption that came through Christ so that we can be justified and be in right standing with God. So what we see here in Romans 3.23 is that every being, every human being, every single one of us, without Jesus, have fallen short of God's standards and we all stand guilty before God. That's the bad news. The same Bible also gives us more bad news. It tells us that, yes, we stand guilty before God because we have sinned. The same Bible also tells us in Romans 6.23, it says here, there's a price for sin. There's a consequence for sin. There's a clear consequence for rebellion against God and going against the will of God. And it tells us in Romans 6.23, it says here, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. That is, the consequence of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, we see the bad news. But there's the good news. Again, there's a choice. The consequence of sin is death. But the gift of God God's gift to us, God's grace to us, is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Meaning that the punishment